Welcome to this overview of 2024. And as we've been uh, connecting and collaborating and looking into this year, we decided that this theme for 2024 is unleashing your inner dragon because of course it is going to be the year of the dragon according to the Chinese uh, ways of looking at you know how they define the years and so on. Something that might be interesting for people to know is that it used to be when Jupiter was moving through a certain part of the sky, that was how they would look at the dragon. I, I mean, the what year it was by based on those constellations. And they're not constellations along the ecliptic, they're constellations along the celestial equator uh, that they were tuning into and they saw them as animals. So the year of the dragon is not, is no longer, they're no longer basing it on Jupiter. Jupiter cycles 11.6 years. And <laughs> so over time it kind of got shifted and they used to start their new year in a different way. But now the Chinese new year starts with the new moon in Aquarius. And that happens to be, I think, February 9th this year, 9th or 10th, depending on your time zone. And so that will begin the year of the dragon. And uh, I just a couple of interesting things that I found about that is that uh, they, they in China, they feel that or they have determined that more babies are born in the year of the dragon. And we have two dragon babies with us. <laughs> They can share more about that in a moment. <laughs> so out of there's half of the people here on this thing are dragons. <laughs> so maybe there's something to that. I'm just saying it's kind of fun to think about. And uh, so anyway, dragon, the dragon energy from their perspective is more masculine. And uh, many cultures saw the dragon, uh, the dragon energy is more feminine. And so like anything, there's masculine and feminine energy present, but we we can really look at this as uh, how if we're in, unleashing our inner dragon, and and it is the year of the wood dragon, meaning that it does have a connection to earth and to the feminine. Uh, so the feminine aspect of the dragon, but the fire dragon would be definitely more masculine, and uh, the air dragon both would be more masculine, and then the earth and water dragons would be more feminine. Uh, so they have to do with strength and wisdom and knowledge, hidden knowledge. Um, we also can think about the dragon lines of the earth and how um, these are the ley lines and the energy lines of the earth that many ancient cultures tapped into and built sacred sites on these dragon lines. And uh, the dragons have been out of our awareness in many ways, except for like from a mythical perspective. But if we think about the energy lines of the earth, we have these energy lines within our body. So the dragons live within us, the dragon energy lives within us. So how perfect is it that we could be unleashing the strength, the wisdom, the beauty, the knowledge, the all of the different things that the dragons represent within us as we go forward into this year, 2024. So with that, I'm passing it along. I love how the dragon and ley lines, it also has that correspondence to meridians in the human body. And so it does suggest to me that maybe there's this whole reconnection with the earth as our body, our body as the earth, because we're starting to sense into those connections. Like, oh, okay, where I go in the, on the earth, absolutely has a different resonance and also within myself and so there's I think there's some beautiful overlap there and I absolutely love this theme of unleashing the dragon I feel like we are just so ready for it I'm gonna just pause myself here because I think I want to hear from Mar and Jamie first Mm, okay, I I just I love this theme and um I love this kind of merging of the fire and the the earth energy that we have here and um I just I feel like this year is such a year of um on and I think it's on a collective level um really waking up to uh, and people seeing kind of the mass hypnosis that has been um, 
placed, you know, the, the powers that should not be have been kind of pulling the strings, trying to create. And I see this pulling back the veil of illusion and people waking up to, um, their, the, the power that they have within themselves and, um, really people, I, I see this really powerful opportunity to really start following your, right. Your North node, your North star and living the life that you're meant to live, um, activating our spiritual gifts and, um, really, you know, really creating this new earth from within, because no matter what's happening on the outside world, intensity and things happening, we're, we're here to do the inner work and in creating this new earth within. And so I think this all just ties in really beautifully with this theme. Oh, I love so much dragons. And I think uh, like the image that I kept seeing for this year is being a tree, like a very solid tree that we have been rooting for a while like is really deep into the earth. And we will talk about the transit, like there is a movement this year from earth to air. So the, the tree is ready to come out and, and there are wings like dragon wings in both sides. And like one of the things that for me, when I feel about unleashing the dragon is about unleashing our creative power and that is not only creativity as something that you do uh, when you have free time. No, your creative power is that life force that moves everything. So it's not creativity, no, it's creative power. It's such a different energy between one and the other. And these two dragons, like masculine and feminine, doing like this and with the wings. So that is like the image that I keep having. And last year was a lot of uh, the image in the heart. And this year is kind of like coming, like the wings are coming out and it's time to fly and to take action and, and to really embrace all the ways that we receive information and that we share information. So for instance, for me, astrology is a portal, but I'm not that good with the, like the dates and the um, technical, like the techniques are there to open the oracle. And I think that is one of the things that for me is going to be very big in many ways, like becoming an oracle and embracing the power of that, that it doesn't have to be supported by all this data. It's just, you know, is this image and, and that's it. And that is the feminine wisdom. Right? And then the masculine, we organize, we put the structures, we, we see information, we learn more, we read books, and we don't have to choose between one and the other. It's like we are both. So it's like, why are we choosing? So I think that is like the image that comes very clearly. And now I'm looking forward to explore all the details and to learn from each other as well. Did, Nora, did you want to say anything more about the dragon thing now that we've heard from Mar and Jamie? <laughs> well, it did just really become quite clear with the wood dragon, maybe this, you know, creating these new structures to empower the feminine in a very simple way and whether that's what we can do for ourselves. So we get to do, you know, the logical part of creating the safe space, holding that space for ourselves. And then so that we can feel regulated, resilient to show up authentically in our full creative power. So I think it's really this supportive energy. How do we get to support the dragon? I love that. And um, I love it. What everybody said so far, like, okay, dragons, life force, energy, power, and the power to change and to, um, to show up and be present and to connect with that inner creativity. I like that Mar too, because everything we do is creative. People say, oh, I'm not creative. I'm like, oh yeah, everything you do is creative, <laughs> whether you think it is or not. So um, I feel like be because of what's been said around the, um, the emerging divine feminine energy, I just want to briefly touch in and have, and maybe get everybody's insight on, there's a lot going on with Sedna this year. 
And she's um, she went into Gemini last year for the first time in 11,500 years or some, some really long time. And she went back into Taurus. She's going back into Gemini in, uh, I think it's in April, uh, April 27th. She goes back into Gemini. Now, Sedna is a dwarf planet and she has an 11,500 year orbit and her orbit goes way out into cosmic cold. No, we don't even know she's there. And then she comes back around and she's coming back around close to the sun and the earth that will be happening in the next, um, you know, 50, 60 years or so. Uh, and so we get to be here for that. And she was discovered in 2003 when she got close enough, we could see her. <laughs> And if we think about her story, she it's it's really how there was a repression of the divine feminine. She, her father throws her over this boat. I won't tell the whole story now, but we'll we'll go into this more deeply sometime. And she winds up sinking to the bottom of the ocean, to the bottom, to the subconscious. The divine feminine sinks out of our more conscious awareness, and then it, it's just the feminine is seen as a very limited point of view. And um, in the process, she gives birth to all the sea creatures, but it feels like she's rising up and the, and the dragon energy rising up, this divine feminine energy. I feel like 2024 could be pretty amazing for all of that. So I'm just curious to what everybody else might think about that as well. Oh, and by the way, she's with the Pleiades. So, and, and, and Sedna with Gemini in Gemini is telling the new story of the feminine. That is our opportunity. So, and she's with the Pleiades, the seven sisters, <laughs> the stars of the, of the Pleiades with a Bohemian magical star um, uh, configuration. And when any time planets were with those stars, it was a time to do the highest alchemy. So that's just a few other things that we can bring into this story of what's happening with Sedna. I love that. And I think right in that redefining the story of the feminine and all of these themes brought in so far, <clears throat> I think it's pretty obvious with the Pluto re-entering Aquarius that there's going to be this shift in redistribution of resources, redistribution of power in some way. I love thinking of Pluto and Aquarius as power to the people. But I think ultimately with Pluto being in a fixed sign and fixed signs all having some element of sustainability, we just really get to look at like, is this sustainable? Is this system sustainable? Is this way that we're treating our bodies or treating the earth sustainable? And it does feel like there's this re-empowerment from the depth to remember that. And then shifting really briefly to that North node and Aries conjunct Chiron that happens February 19th, I feel like this brings in this sort of warrior energy to actually um, protect this sort of noble protection of these resources or of what is sacred. I, I always think about, you know, it is important to fight for something, even if it means, you know, it's this noble fight. There is this beautiful opportunity to come into, I think, just that that warrior spirit that's really been coming through for me and a lot of the people that I've been talking to is just how to not worry so much at all about what other people are saying, what other people are projecting onto you. The South Node in Libra, we are still going to be working with this the whole year. So there's so much releasing of those falsehoods and distortions and projections. And it's wild how insidious they can be. So I feel like we get all of these beautiful opportunities to see them so clearly, perhaps things that we've been thinking we already did work on this. Well, guess what? We get to do more work on it. We get to come into this sort of sacred warrior stance. And really, I think it's this warrior stance for our healing, for reconnecting with ourselves, reconnecting with our divinity. I think two of Aries is that spark of the divine, remembering that we are the divine child. And it's like, how do we stand up for that for and release any of those distortions that would try to project onto us otherwise? So ultimately, that's you know, power to the people, really embracing that sacred warrior energy. 
And, and for me, one of the uh, ideas that come to mind when you were talking about Senna, and then Pluto into moving into Aquarius, coming back into Capricorn for the last time, finally, <laughs> from uh, September to I have here for, to November, it will be back in Capricorn, and then finally uh, in Aquarius forever. And that Aquarius is um, the new society, new humanity, what do we do with technology, all of this. And the answer at the moment in the North Node in Aries is like, what is your action? What is your present from this present moment? What is yours to take action? And instead of like saying everything that is wrong with the world and all of this is like, what is it that you are called to do at this very moment in every second of your day? And I think that is also the dragon coming into life. It's not so much worried about what all others think, as Nura was saying. It's just like, this is mine. And if you don't see it, it's maybe not for you. And that's completely fine that we don't have to agree with everyone. We don't have to be liked by everyone. And that theme with eclipses is going to be on our faces all the time and it's just like you just unleash your dragon and whatever the others do is their life to take action like we cannot be responsible for other people's actions but we can be responsible for our, ours and I think that is not a year to procrastinate I don't think it's a year to wait for and later I will be more ready. No, you are ready now. For whatever you're ready at the moment, you are ready at this moment. And you will be more and more developed in the future. And I think that Pluto into Aquarius is going to look whatever we individually do. It will be the result of what we see. So it's like, what do we want? We want a Robocop, Terminator, or we want a society that is like a paradise with technology. It's our choice, totally. So it's like, and it's not about convincing anyone else. It's just like being a model and being an inspiration, a lighthouse for others to be. And that's also Aries. I think that is an aspect of Aries that is not normally seen. It's just seen as like a fighter. and But it's the one that is opening a way for the others to follow and it doesn't it does it not by convincing everyone we should be doing this it's just like i'm going so if you want to come you're welcome but i'm going that way and that is the way to open new paths and i think for this year many people are called to open a new path and um, for the new stories, we will come back, I think, to that with the Gemini. There is a part of the year that it has such a strong emphasis in Gemini uh, with Sedna, with the um, Venus cycle, also the star point in Gemini, with uh, Jupiter moving there and then also Mars. And there is a lot of rewrite your story. So instead of being fully into the past and like I am this way because this happened to me it's like we all had stories and and I'm not saying that they are not compli uh, complicated but we cannot be the whole time in that hamster wheel where we are not really going anywhere I think that dragon power energy is like whatever happened to us in a moment in our lives it was for us to grow it wasn't to be a victim and I think that a story with Sedna about being a victim and like cutting but that fingers that they were cut they become animals and they become creatures of the ocean I think from that pain that we have had in the past we can create so much beauty this year but we need to take action and I think it's not going to happen just because we wish that this happens. I think there is this action that is very important. Wow, I'm just so inspired by what everyone's sharing. And 
what's just coming to mind with me speaking to the the watery energy of Sedna and also bringing in that Neptune is coming for the first time to the final degree of Pisces. Now in, uh, I believe it's 2025 and 2026, we're going to have Neptune retrograding in and out of Pisces and Aries, but Neptune this year in 2024 is going to get to 29 uh, Pisces and then retrograde back. So this is the first time making it to that. And it's t- uh, 29, I believe in 55 arc minutes. So almost at the very end of Pisces and then we'll retrograde back. And there's this real initiation that I'm also thinking about with also setting the story as well. And for us, is this art of surrender. It feels like this final um, initiation to really master the art of surrender and opening up to the divine, the divine flow. And even what you were sharing, Mar, about being the oracle. I think that's so much too about Neptune making it to this final degree of Pisces, Pisces as we let go and we let flow and bringing in so much, right? Like with the Sedna story, maybe surrendering the old stories that are just no longer serving us and not in alignment with us. And then bringing in too, uh, Mar, like you said, Pluto is going to be uh, spending its final time in Capricorn, retrograding back in 2024. And then um, we'll finally move into Aquarius to stay after going in and out of Capricorn to Aquarius two different times. This is like the um, surrendering the stories from the old paradigm, what from the the old structures, the old world, what's no longer true for us anymore or was never true for us in the first place. Uh, The conditioning we received about um, from this, you know, however you want to say it, the, the dominator paradigm, the patriarchal, there's so many ways you can say it, this old world what is ready to to die within us what are we ready to surrender to really open up to our true essence and right that north node and aries are our true uh our true pathway and i really see this pluto going into uh, capricorn for the the last time this 245 year cycle um is really we're probably going to see some of the uh, you know, the, the old structure trying to hang on a bit, that last grab at it, but then that Neptune making it to 29 Pisces. I feel like there's this beautiful opportunity for um, us to wake up to some of the illusions of the old world and all this fiery energy we have, right? To become empowered and to take action towards this new earth that we that we want to create and that we are creating and will create this better this this new earth this uh you know this this higher frequency we live in a multi-dimensional reality and there's a real call i love like this it's the the the, it's it's the both and right like it's um to me that neptune making to 29 degree pisces point there's this real call to stay connected to our higher heart and unification and not falling into the divisive traps, the divide and conquer that the old structures are trying to push us into. And in that um, staying connected to our heart and staying unified, we can also hold space for people's different opinions and our individuality among that with that North Node in Aries that we can all stay unified while we're honoring our individuality and honoring everyone else's individuality as well. Oh, wow. That's just so good. Everything everybody said is just so good. <laughs> uh, and, and just a, a quick little follow-up. So Pluto currently at 29, well, it's coming back to 29 Capricorn will be um, going back into Aquarius soon is trining Sedna. And uh, so, so, you know, and this whole idea of dying to the old, so we can be reborn to the new, because we have to let it go. We have to, you can't build a new house where old house is standing. <laughs> you have to take down the old house and then build the new house. So this is, uh, you know, it may not be easy. And sometimes it's, you know, we, we might be grieving that old house or aspects of it that we really loved. And yet we still need to take it down in order to build the new one because the old one isn't sustainable anymore. So I love that. And then um, the, uh, so writing the new story, or maybe what we're doing is we're 
it's not that we have to completely rewrite our own story. We just add a new chapter and it's the happy ending. <laughs> Let's add a new chapter to our story and have the happy ending retelling our story because the old story of where we've had the challenges can be a medicine story. It can be the, it can be, you know, people going through challenging times and they hear your story and they hear your happy ending. They can realize they can get to the happy ending also um, so it can be inspiring for them. And it, so it's not being attached to the old story. It's not, you know, but if you can tell it as a medicine story, as a way to support people going through a rough time, then, um, then it can be, then it can be helpful. But if you're just telling it to tell it, well, that's a whole other story <laughs> anyway. Um, so the, uh, so we have all of this going on and we'll, we'll probably share more about this throughout the year. So definitely stay tuned to what we have to say because we can go deeper in. But the next thing we wanna talk about, and I, this, I think is the, the whole fiery aspect of what's going on, Chiron conjunct the North Node. We've got the eclipses, the, the first eclipse, the total solar eclipse coming across the United States on April 8th and Aries also conjunct Chiron. So there's so many aspects that are saying that if we need to burn something down so that, you know, to, to be that Phoenix, dive into the, to the fire so that we can rise up anew, this is the year for that. Uh, we definitely are um, being encouraged to let go or burn down or uh, dismantle or dis deconstruct whatever it might be the old so that we can that we can move that will be more free to move into that whatever the the new is that's coming forth and uh jamie yeah i love the the because we're crafting the new earth and we are the as we imagine it as we live it within ourselves it helps it to become part of the greater collective i love all of that and I feel like there is this element, especially with the strength of air as well. We have this shift into air really fueling the fire. I love to think about, okay, inspiration, new ideas, new exchange of energy. We're getting things moving. I love how with Jupiter, so Jupiter is doing a lot of really interesting things this spring, April 20th, Jupiter joins Uranus at 21 degrees Taurus. And then May 25th, Jupiter enters Gemini. So it's kind of like we get this massive amplification of all that Uranus has been doing, really, I think, helping us to shake up all of these old patterns and also our comfort zones. I think we can all admit that there's, you know, there is a wonderful element of comfort. And then there's like the incredibly stagnant <laughs> expression of comfort. Right. And I think that that is what Uranus is helping us to shake up. I think of all of the addictions, micro or macro, that are also being shaken up. I can certainly think of them in myself. Like, what am I really attached to in the world as I see it? And my worldview and, and what I think life is that would actually just, I would be so served by just letting that go. I would be so served by just releasing that attachment and I think that there's this coming into something more spiritualized if if that's the way we want to put it but I think it's this reminder of you know our power is not something that's only coming from without right it's very within it's something that really can't be taken from us even if we die you know so it's very intense and Jupiter's just amplifying all of that and then when he shifts into Gemini it feels like all of this beautiful exchange of ideas, but really looking at polarities, maybe we can reflect back on what it was like for us when the North Node was in Gemini, and you know, near the beginning of pandemic times, and all of the onslaught of information, and what are we now doing with that? Are we taking action on it? Um, but I also think with Gemini, there's this reminder of innocence, this coming back to something very pure that, you know, if we have questions, if we're curious, it's, it's actually such a healthy form to help us change something if we need to, just to help us look at something a different way. You know, yogis say, you know, if you need to see something in a different direction, like turn your body, go upside down while you think about that issue, and maybe you'll come to a greater, a, a more aligned solution. I also think about 
how Jupiter really shows us our higher self aspirations and what we're expanding into and how we're opening. And so tuning into maybe being a place where people can come up for air while we're kind of going through all of this really interesting, you know, water things with Saturn and Neptune and then the fire. It's like we're being stretched by all of the elements this year. But if we can be that place where people come up for air, then we're we're doing you know our part. And then how can we also create that within ourselves? You know, create those structures where you know we can breathe and be with it all. So there's a lot happening this year. I I love that um, that energy of. Um a lot happening, right? Like I think that is something that is also interesting that in many ways, I think people and myself included is like, we have been feeling like there is something changing, but the change is not here yet. And like the such a stagnant energy because we have Jupiter in Taurus that is slow. So things have been happening, but we don't see the results that much. And and I think that conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in April is this like and and like there everything that has been happening, there is this climax of breaking free, like unleashing that dragon and like unleashing everything that doesn't allow you to be you and to grow. And and the same with Pluto, even like going back to from Capricorn Uranus, uh, to Aquarius, there is this rhythm that is very slow because it's doing something for a long term. And this year that a lot is happening is part of like we is we are going to see more changes um, over the surface, not like just below the surface, but like in our lives and people like moving and um, and I love uh, that Nora mentioned the North Node in Gemini during the 20, 2020 because it was the medicine that time. And I think there is such a resonance between this year and 2020 when the planets are in Gemini because like uh, Venus is going to also have the conjunction with the sun in Gemini in a Leo cycle. So it's a lot about creativity and the new stories and everything that we have been weaving together. And, and it's uh, reminding us of what is it that it was happening during the pandemic? How much have we grown from that? It's like, it seems ages ago, it seems another life if we look back. And so it's like, we thought that nothing was happening, but so much have been happening in these last years. And now is the time to, to really take action. I think I'm going to repeat this a lot <laughs> with the North Node and the eclipses are about that. Like the a April 8th eclipse is with Chiron. So it's like our wounded, it's like I'm not enough. I don't trust myself, I don't, um, there is so much in so many people that we need to validate ourselves with others and it's like no you don't need others to tell you uh, your value like your value is just you because you are alive and you're amazing and, and we are all powerful houses of like uh, infinite potential so it's like nobody can tell us that like it's the opposite normally if we don't believe in ourselves we will attract people who don't believe in ourselves so we can learn that lesson i think that is one of the lessons that all of us sooner or later like we all have to uh, learn it's like um the validation is never outside of us and the others are just mirrors and i think that is the uh, the um, Libra, Aries, healthy combination. When the other is just a mirror to show you what is already inside of you. So it's like two complete, fully uh, potential, amazing people that they come together to create something even bigger, even more passionate, even more. But it's not about you 
um, fulfilling something that I really want to fulfill myself, but I don't believe it within me that it's possible. So I just love you to love me. It's like, no, I love you because I love you. And then you love me. It's such a different energy. And I think during the eclipses, oh, both the lunar eclipse of 25th of March, at least in Europe, sometimes the um, dates are different. And then the solar eclipse are a lot about that. It's like healing within us our wound of being enough just because we're breathing. And then from there, we relate to others who are also uh, being enough just by being who they are. And, and in that way, we relate in such a different way that is not about... Who, um, I have a hole and you just complete me. And there are so many songs that need to be re re uh, talking about the rewriting stories. We need to rewrite the songs because it's like, without you, I'm nothing. It's like, what? <laughs> no, without you, I'm everything. And with you, I'm even more than everything. So please, if anybody is listening to us and they're songwriters, we need new Libra songs that are talking about relationships from a place of plenitude and wholeness. And in that way, love is such a different experience. Oh, yeah, so good, so good. All right, so uh, th this will be our wrap up round. <laughs> and a couple of things. So whatever you feel like you wanna bring in around this year uh, to so people can have that that greater overview. Um, I'm thinking about what Jamie was talking about, Neptune being at the 29th degree of Pisces. And of course, Neptune is most at home in Pisces. Some would say rules. Uh, Neptune rules Pisces. I don't like the word rule or rulership. I say it's most like or most um, resonant with because we want to get away from rules and rulership. <laughs> we want to live in a, a, a society that is more uh, looks at things as um, equal and and that Neptune in any sign has equal value. It's just more resonant when it's in Pisces because it's more like the same. And so the this idea that um, if we look at the Piscean Neptunian energy, it's about dreaming our reality. What's the dream we're dreaming? How are we dreaming up a new world? And how are we dreaming up our new world for ourselves individually, but also for all of us collectively? And, and that, that comes back to the whole new earth idea. Like if we're dreaming a new earth, we're dreaming a new reality and Neptune and, and Pisces at the 29th degree, how could that be any more important, right? Like the most powerful point that we can actually do that. The other thing is, is that Neptune and Pisces often operate in the unknown because we tend to think in a logical, linear, rational way. And we've been trained to do that. But these energies are not logical, linear, rational ways of being. They are in a place that is just beyond all that. And so, uh, so oftentimes when we're really feeling the strength of Neptune and Pisces, we can feel like we just don't know. I don't know. I'm really confused. <laughs> I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's happening. That is the perfect place to be because when we don't know new possibilities and new things can come in that we didn't know were possible before because we were so locked into a logical, linear, rational way of thinking. So allowing yourself to not know and to trust that if you just follow that inner guidance, that deeper inner knowing, it will guide you to be where you need to be. And so, um, so there's that, that's going on. I love what Swami Beyond Ananda says. He says, the best way to face the unknown is by not knowing. <laughs> and then in the What the Bleep movie, at the end of the movie, the last line of the movie, Fred Allen Wolf, PhD, you know, um, physicist says, um, it's not about being in the known, it's about being in the mystery. So we can in, um, connect and, and just allow ourselves to be in the mystery of what's unfolding. And yes, we can have our dreams and our visions and our possibilities, but not be so attached to them that we're not open to other possibilities that we haven't thought about. So that is probably where I should have ended it. But I'm going to also just say a little bit about the fact that we start the year out. Um, uh, well, Mercury's going to station direct on January 1st with the star of dream healing. 
uh, called Rasselhag in the constellation of Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. So, so we start the year with this whole idea of dream healing happening as Mercury stations right there. And it's there for several days before and after. So that helps to energize this whole idea. And then, uh, and then all, uh, Uranus will go uh, direct on J January 27th, starting a time when all the planets will be moving in direct motion for 64 days. And that's a time when we can really um, energize, you know, so whatever intentions we have, we can, we can move them forward. There's nothing keeping us, holding us back. Of course, there is a shadow side to that. <laughs> And I'll put a link into the show notes that of, of an article that goes into this more deeply. But the shadow side is if you're moving forward and you're not really considering what you're how you're moving forward or you're doing it too quickly, it you know it can cause problems um, as well. So so we can take advantage of the fact that there's this forward movement, but we can also um, be conscientious about how we're doing that and maybe make a plan before the planets all start moving forward so that you have a sense of how you want to to work with that energy so that'll last from january 27th to april 1st and uh so it's also um an election year and the there there's in the article that i'm going to share there's a, a a lot that talks about how no president who's been inaugurated with all planets moving forward has ever served a second term uh, consecutively or in any way, actually. So we know we have an ex-president who's trying to serve a second term. <laughs> Will that happen? I don't know, but he was inaugurated with all the planets moving forward as was our current president. And, um, and so it's interesting to see how that pattern has continued to play out through, throughout. And sometimes the, the presidents were in their second term, so they weren't going to serve another term. So, but I'm, I just find that to be fascinating, something to be aware of. And so how are we going to move forward and how are we going to really dream into a new earth for ourselves and for all life on planet earth? Oh, I, I think that you <laughs> I'm like I'm going to talk. <laughs> I, I said this is our last I this was our last round. So yes. I <laughs> anyway. Okay. Hmm. Mercury might be retrograde while we're re recording this. <laughs> it's part of the fun, right? And uh, talking about Mercury retrograde, I would like to highlight that we have this change of element as well within the Mercury retrogrades uh into fire science. So adds that uh, rethinking our actions and re like the whole year is there is this energy of like acting and then seeing and something when Kaling when you were talking about these dreamings these dreams and what are we dreaming I think that Saturn in Pisces also is taking the responsibility in our dreams and our waking dreams as well like when we are imagining the future what future are we imagining in an active way? Because I think we're going to see a more rapid manifestation of everything that we receive. And it's just, whoop, I just thought this and this is happening. So I think that being responsible of our dreams, our thoughts, our waking imagination for the future and not energizing these futures that we don't really want to see in the world. And... Um, and something else that I wanted to say to conclude is that during the Gemini part of the year, there is this energy of uh, experimenting, like when Jupiter enters Gemini and then uh, Venus cycle, all of this, have fun uh, because the end of the year feels very different. So I think it's important to, and it's not to, promote fear or anything but the mars retrograde that we will talk more when we meet again in the june solstice, solstice that mars retrograde feels uh, complex and the so taking into consideration that is just before experiment leave because we have this present life at this moment and and then whatever happens next is just 
whatever happens next. And that for astrology, sometimes we live so much in the future that we forget the energy that is present at the moment. And I think during the, the, that Gemini and the eclipses in Aries is all about be present in what is emerging within you in every second of your life and breathe. I think breath work is going to be very um, healing as well for the nervous system because I that a uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunction also feels very electric for the uh, nervous system. So just taking care of our electricity inside feels that is also very important. Mm, I love that, Maren, as you're sharing, I'm looking at my beautiful baby and his eyes, <laughs> yeah, and um, it's just reminding me, you know, the, this message of what are what are you nurturing in your life, and how are you nurturing your dream as well? Um, it feels really, really important to really um, create that sacred space and to prioritize dreaming and dreaming forward and and nurturing our dreams because the dream realm and the waking realm are, are merged they're not these separate separate spaces and we can really dream our reality forward and I think there's something really significant that in um gosh I'm like all mixed up in years I think it was 2022 we had the Jupiter Neptune conjunction and Pisces, and now Jupiter's gone, and we have the the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and Taurus this year. And Pisces is that dream realm, right, where we're uh, channeling in from the higher realms of consciousness, where we are the oracle, and we're tapping into that multi dimensionality. And then Aries is where we start to birth it through. And now Taurus is where we ground it and kind of stabilize it and it has fertility and this abundance and fecundity and so with Jupiter coming to Uranus there's this big wild breakthrough to break free into this new reality this year so what are you what are you dreaming into and I think there's also something really powerful I'm just kind of I'm always curious about like what's going on for me while I'm bringing messages through and there's this like you know I, the, I feel like oh I should be like you know, have my eyes on the computer screen and camera this whole time, but I have my baby in my lap and I like cannot, when he's looking at me with his beautiful eyes, I can't ignore him. I have to, you know, I want to be really present with him. And so there's something about, we can, um, there's something about like flexibility this year and also like being able to fluidly like shift and like hold space for more than one thing at a time too I don't even know if that makes sense but that's that's kind of just what's what's coming through here so yeah what are you how are you nurturing your dreams this year oh I love that I felt like I'm just getting so many visions of just this like fluid dancing like almost dancing into the new dream it does feel like that's a beautiful way to be with the unknown as well because then it's fun and you're like I'm energized and I'm alive in this space of unknown like what else is going to happen especially something like partnership dancing it's like okay what I'm going to do and what they're going to do and how it's going to become this beautiful co-creation that I'm not even sure that had I had expectations of how this would go, that I would even come anywhere near to the beautiful end result of what's possible. So I definitely feel like that is something that we get to do this year is really, um, you know, tune into this fluidity. And this, I think, can bring us more freedom. It also, I think, gives us more choice, but also learning how to see choice as this it's constant thing. You know, we don't just make a choice one time and then that's it. It's like, that's all we do. And it's similar to creation. I mean, maybe it is, you know, choice and creation. Are they not the same thing? What are we creating? But I think with all of this more, you know, this expansion of choice, this ex expansion of freedom, we also have, therefore, this expansion of personal and collective responsibility. I'm sure we'll talk more about this when we um, reconnect on these themes, maybe for the second half of the year, because there are uh, Jupiter Saturn squares this year, which I think are really alluding to these themes as well, happening with Jupiter and Gemini and Saturn and Pisces, these mutable signs really requiring that flexibility. 
but I feel like it's choice and responsibility. You know, we get to really level up in taking responsibility for the lives we're creating without becoming paralyzed by fear or shoulds. And I think this is where that North Node in Aries comes in and says, as a reminder, you know, it's it's not about being fearless, but it's actually about being brave. You know, how do we be afraid and do it anyway? How do we confront it anyway? And just, you know, realizing that we are more powerful than we've ever known. So I'm excited to continue to explore these themes with you all. We are more powerful than we've ever known. And that is when we unleash our inner dragon <laughs> and having the courage to do that and having the courage to dream the new dream and all of the things that have been said here. I hope this has been really, um, we hope this has been really ho helpful and supportive to everyone who's listening and how you begin and navigate this year, 2024. So thank you so much. Stay tuned. Bye everyone.